Um, up next, we're going to have Fred Clark, who's the Director of the Office of Tribal Relations with the U.S. Forest Service, come up and um, tell us about the Forest Service. Good morning. Bonjour. Bonjour, Nikon. That's how you say hello, my friends, in Potawatomi. Um, I'm really glad to be here. My name is Fred Clark, Director of the Office of Tribal Relations. And um, I'm going to start out with just a uh, really kind of general overview about some of the things that the Forest Service has been doing in partnership with uh, tribes and trying to help continue to in build and enhance the relationships that the agency has with tribes. We didn't have a chance to uh, load up the PowerPoint before um, we got started today, so we're just trying to get that up here real quick. While it's coming up, I just wanted to make note that there's a... Um, no, it should be... Look under this one and go to the end. Ah, there we go. So as I was listening to the legislative update, I was flashbacks to when I was, uh, last year I spent five months on the Hill working for the, the uh, Senate Committee on Indian Affairs. And uh, some of these things that were talked about today were just starting to, to work in right now. It's really great to see how far things are coming and, you know, um, Matt and and uh, everybody, I really appreciate those words. And then to listen to the types of things that Dave was talking about with the BIA is happening really reinforces that the partnership between Intertribal Timber Council, BIA, and the Forest Service is strong and, it, and it's growing stronger. So over the past few years, I've really noticed a, a trend, especially the last three years, where the, these partnerships have really gotten stronger and it's reflected throughout government and the, the strength of the, the voice, the tribal voice, with the federal government. You know, attending the, the yearly gatherings of tribal leaders with, the, with the, uh, the White House, the President's Tribal Leaders Conference, seeing how that's changed over time has just been amazing. When people first started going to that meeting, it was like everybody was, tribes would get up and say, I'm, I'm really concerned about this. We need, we need this. And then the, the agency heads would get up and say, well, this is, uh, this is our position and, you know, we're going to continue doing this. And then over the years, it's really changed to where tribal leaders get up and they say, these are the particular programs that we're interested in assistance with and you can help us this way. And by the way, we're, we want to be part of the solution. So we're going to offer to help in these ways. And then the agency heads get up and say, well, really, we're, we've been listening, we're we thank you for that, and uh, so we're going to do this, this, and this to, to try to assist on the, these matters. It's just a really big change in the way things are, are approached. So I'm going to start out kind of general and then work to some specific stuff. So what we're trying to do is, is build a, a, an orientation towards collaborative stewardship with both natural and cultural resources. Natural resources, cultural resources, we try to in the Western world, we differentiate between those a great deal because of the laws, regulations, and policies, and all that sort of stuff. But in reality, cultural resources, natural resources, they're the same thing. I mean, cultural resources are natural resources. Natural resources are cultural resources. So we want to create resilient ecosystems through on the ground community-based projects. So it's, it's really about community. You can't see it, but I have, an, I have a hat on. It's got a big blazing theme on the top, it says, it's about the people, stupid. Because we do this natural resource work for our communities, for our families. And we always need to keep that in mind that behind all this, there are communities that we're trying to serve. We're working on collaboration that builds commitment to partnerships and the ownership of the results. So it's not just the Forest Service out doing its own thing and BIA out doing its thing and individual tribes going out doing those, their own thing. <clears throat> it's we all own the results together. 
So we need to continue to do a better job of working together to do, the, to, to do that, to find common interests and leverage those resources to get the work done. We've seen a lot of that leveraging happening in some of the projects that have been happening, um, like the TFPA review and the, um, the, the trainings that have been happening uh, lately. So here's a short overview <clears throat> of some of the things that we've been working on in the Office of Tribal Relations and the Forest Service. So since 2013, the Tribal Relations Directives that are being revised have been out for tribal consultation. We're just getting ready to um, send those out for public comment. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, recently published is a Tribal Guide to Forest Service Grants and Agreements, and we've published a, um, a Forest Service Tribal Research Roadmap. It's one of the other changes that I've really seen, like within the Forest Service, is that individual functional areas within the agency have really stepped up to the plate and taken on the responsibility of working with tribes. It used to be that people depended on the Office of Tribal Relations to, to um, get things going and to take over projects and really um, do, do a lot of the, the actual work, functional work. And now it's, it's changed entirely. We've got people like uh, Sharon Nygaard Scott, who works on the forest management staff. We've got people like Brian Rice, who they're the functional experts. They're the people who have responsibility. They, they know that tribal relations in the Forest Service is the responsibility of everybody in the agency, that it's the functional folks who do that work. And then the Office of Tribal Relations, we're there to provide support and assistance. We're not there to actually do the functional work. It's a great change. Um, so I want to talk just briefly about the, the uh, tribal engagement roadmap because that's the big change that Forest Service Research and Colin Hardy here is from Forest Service Research is, is, and uh, Sarah Hoagland back in the back is um, part of that too, that, that the functional areas are really stepping up. In the last three years, every research station in the Forest Service has at least one uh, project going with tribes. And the roadmap has helped. It outlines an agenda for the Forest Service Research and Development staff regarding services to engagement with and learning from Indian tribes and other indigenous groups. So they take a very specific look of what, about what's happening, what kind of research is needing to build and enhance existing partnerships and uh, support tribal decision making about what kind of research tribes would like to see. It's really great. So along those lines, I wanted to make a little uh, shout out because Sarah Hoagland and Dr. Mike Dockery are getting ready to uh, do a call for papers for a Journal of Forestry um, in a special issue of the Journal of Forestry on Tribal Forest Management, Innovations for Sustainable Forest Management. So if you have questions about that, Sarah's over here. You can, you can ask her. I also wanted to let you know a little bit about the Tribal Connections GIS map service, and we'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that in detail later. So some other things that are really exciting is that uh, Alicia Bell Sheeter works on the tribal relations staff in my office. It works half time for the climate change office. So we're really being able to devote um, specific effort towards um, tribes and climate change. So it's allowing us to better coordinate with Sean over at BIA and, and other folks and, and bring, that, bring that issue and, and that effort along. We've talked a great deal at this meeting about TFPA implementation, that the report was completed. Um, the ITC, the BIA, Forest Service together, two trainings have been completed, and I want to let you know that we're really looking strongly at having additional workshops in the future. Uh, great Lakes, um, Northwest, Midwest, you know, all over the, all over the place um, where we can identify where there's a need, we're gonna try to make that happen. So in the IFMAT report, we've talked about that a great deal as well. It demonstrates that tribal forestry is awesome. Uh, it's been doing that for 30 years, and people are really paying attention. It's great to see. Some other things that are happening, we're just about ready to publish a administrative history of the relationship between tribes and the Forest Service. Uh, a guy named um, Ted Catton out of Montana is has got this all written up. That's in galley proofs now at the University of Arizona Press. So hopefully that will be coming up very soon. We're in the final stages of 
putting together a technical guide. This is really for Forest Service personnel to better understand the provisions in the 2008 Farm Bill that are specific to the Forest Service around reburial, closures of national forest system land, uh, keeping information provided by tribes confidential, and other topics. So this is all around traditional cultural uses. Um, and special forest products is another part of those. We are testing a new tribal consultation database that's going to be USDA wide, but the Forest Service being the large um, agency within USDA, we're, we're trying it out first in Alaska and then spreading out across different regions to get the kinks worked out before we can uh, use it across the, the Forest Service and then we'll use it across the USDA. We've developed web-based training on tribal relations and it's online now for all uh, USDA employees, including Forest Service employees. The new directives, uh, new regulations USDA has for tribal consultation and collaboration uh, makes this mandatory. It's not in effect yet as mandatory, but as soon as, soon as we get this um, the stuff going that's going to become mandatory. Um, we've also been helping a lot with other agencies, trying to help them understand what the relationship between tribes and the federal government is, why it's there, and how to work with tribes better. I've worked recently with the natural, um, the national um, NRC, with Corps of Engineers, with with FISS. I mean F FSIS. That's Farm Services Information Service. And, um, and other agencies. So with, you know, those are some things that, that are going, but I want to really uh, focus on a couple of things that you need to keep your eyes on that are coming up. We'll hear more about the first one a little bit when Billy Barkwin is talking, because it has to do with forest plan revisions and a new planning rule. So the new planning rule has specific provisions about tribal consultation and has specific provisions about working with tra traditional ecological knowledge and protecting sacred sites. These are all really uh, important uh, elements in there. So it's just an idea that if uh, forest plan revision is happening in your, your traditional use areas, get involved with that. Um, there are climate change hubs that are being established with centers of activities around adaptation with the Department of Interior, Forest Service Research and Development, and the Climate Change Office. And we're trying to develop a series of new uh, uh, communication tools, blogs and webinars, and um, website enhancements. Now I want to back up a little bit and spend a little more detail with some of the things that I just mentioned. First of all, the Tribal Relations Directives. Because the Tribal Relations Directives are, it's two parts. There's a manual and a handbook. The manual tells Forest Service employees what to do. And then the handbook tells us how to do it. So we've, we've done both of those for tribal relations. As I said before, it's been out for tribal consultations since 2013, summer of 2013. And um, it's, with, it's on its way to the Office of um, Management and Budget so we can publish it for public comment. There will be a 60-day public comment period. And at the end of that period, then tribal consultation will end and public comment period will end. And then we'll take all those comments from both the tribes and, and the public and rework that a little bit for the final. So that's going to have some important elements because it requires certain sorts of training elements. Um, it has a whole series of tribal um, related, tribal relations related core competencies. So that'll be really good to look at. Let's look a little bit. There's there's the, uh, the tribal guide to grants and agreements are called start a partnership with the USDA Forest Service or obtain federal financial assistance. What this does is it goes through all the different authorities and all the different branches of the Forest Service and, and peels out the authorities that tribes have to, to work with the Forest Service and a little bit about how to go um, about that. So it's really useful. You can find it on our website and may as well tell you right now the easiest way to find our website is just to Google Forest Service Tribal Relations. You know, it's, it's easier than, than giving you a, a big, long URL. It just pops right up. You can find it real easily. 
So <clears throat> this next little bit, I want to talk about um, sacred sites and sacred sites protection because we've spent a lot of time and effort mm -hmm. and continue to uh, do that. Big shift within the agency, it, um, a lot of leadership support in trying to do a better job of protecting Indian sacred sites, sacred places, and that fits in very well with the, all the talk that we've had about uh, forestry in the past few days. Because all or part of every national forest and grassland is carved out of the ancestral lands of American Indian, Alaska Native peoples, indigenous communities, indigenous communities across the country still maintain strong historical and spiritual connections to the land, connections that have not been extinguished despite changes in land ownership. And that's a direct quote from Deputy Chief Leslie Weldon. She's the Deputy Chief for the National Forest System. And it connects with um, a mapping tool that we've just developed and we're about ready to make public. We, we don't have permission yet to actually release it, but I want to give you a little overview of what it is about because, uh, you know, Butch Blazer was here the other day and he talked about 2,600 miles of, <coughs> of land, of bordered, shared border between Forest Service and tribes. Well, that's an old figure. And with this new tool that we've de developed, we've been able to do new calculation, and it's closer to 4,000 miles. So it's, uh, and growing. But it's not just the, the, the border that's the connection. It's, it's the relationship between our lands and jurisdictions. And the Tribal Forest Protection Act is one way that really illustrates that it's beyond just the border. It's, it's the shared responsibility, shared resources, and shared interests. So what we want to do is improve decision making for uh, incident and resource management, uphold treaty and trust responsibilities, define the scope of tribal needs and interests on Forest Service lands, and identify cooperative opportunities. So we developed this tool that has three layers. The first layer is the standard Forest Service mm -hmm. lands layer, administrative boundaries created from agency data, and it's um, lands that are administered or owned by the agency. Then we also have the tribal lands layer that we got from the, the census, the tiger files at census. And they're Indian lands, uh, federally recognized uh, tribes, 56.2 million acres of tribal land held in trust. It's this third layer that is perhaps of most interest for this tool because it's the ceded lands. It's the land ceded by tribes to the federal government mm -hmm. by treaty. And uh, it's based on the Royce maps. And <clears throat> So these, the Royce maps are maps of ceded lands that were kind of handwritten, hand-drawn maps that have been used for years and years and referred to. But to my knowledge, they've never been digitized. So we digitized them. And it's important to include these because many ceded lands overlap national forest system lands, current tribal members retain all these interests in those lands. And uh, tribal consultation should include tribes represented in the ceded lands and nearby tribal lands. So from my point of view, I think, you know, if I was a new person coming on to a national forest and I wanted to start working with tribes, how could I easily find out where those tribal lands are, what the, the tribal um, trust responsibilities extend to, and what the treaty responsibilities are, the obligations around treaties. And this tool actually provides a really easy way to do that because you can drill down uh, pretty, pretty deep on the land to look at that. So if you put it all together, then you end up with these overlays where you can look at the Forest Service lands, the tribal lands, and the ceded lands mm -hmm. together for a variety of purposes. For instance, uh, let's take TFPA for instance. You, you can look and see where tribal lands and um, Forest Service lands intersect or where they're close. And then you can tie that with other tools and see where the threats might be going from National Forest Service land towards tribal land. So that's just one application of many. So you can you can drill down from the uh, the main page to a variety of spots across the whole country. So anywhere you want to go, you can look and drill down. <clears throat> so this one, for instance, is um, the 
This one's in the west, northwest, and this one's in New York. This is the Finger Lakes area. So just a couple of quick examples. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but pretty soon we're going to have that available for everybody to use. But some things to remember about that tool is that tribal connections should be used as a reference point for information only. It doesn't have the, the, the claims commission information in it, so it's, it's not all the information that people would need. It's just an indicator. It's a, it's a first step to, to going deeper into learning more. The map shown fulfills the need for that I have, the Office of Tribal Relations, to maintain a, a link to treaties. The map is interactive, so you can use it however you want to, to help make it work for you. And we're hoping to release it later this year. Now I'm going to spend just a little bit of time. What am I doing with time? A little bit of time on um, the sacred sites. Um, so the Secretary of Agriculture asked the Forest Service and the USDA Office of Tribal Relations to figure out how to do a better job of protecting Indian sacred sites. So we, uh, we did a review of existing laws, regulations, and policies. We did a series of listening sessions, over 50 listening sessions around the country, followed by 50 consultation sessions, government to government consultation sessions, and developed a final report with recommendations. Very extensive set of recommendations. Secretary took a look at those in 2012 and said, yep, let's do that. So we took those recommendations and uh, now we're moving forward and implementing those for long term. And we've established a series of shorter term benchmarks and actions. Uh, some important parts about this is we have a lot of very very strong support from the department and from Forest Service leadership at the very, very top. The executive team is um, made up of top agency leaders. We have two deputy chiefs, Jim Hubbard, back in the room here, he's on the team. Leslie Weldon, the deputy chief for National Forest Systems on the team. We have three uh, deputy regional foresters, some SES level um, directors at the Washington office. And then we've got a series of folks across the agency at various levels, uh, line officers, staff people, tribal relations people who make up the core team, who are doing the, the, the actual work of trying to get these things set up that we're working on. So the three sub-teams of the core team are working on communications, policy and guidance, and on-the-ground actions, and those reflect the themes that are in the Sacred Sites report. These are now being combined to a single strategy with short and long-term actions, and developed a framework uh, that's reflecting protection uh, for Sacred Sites, not just in the, in the the tribal relations directives, but when every new directive comes up for revision, we take a look at it and see where we can put sacred sites protection into that. Um, even ones that aren't coming up for revision, we're doing a review of the directives to see where we can uh, insert sacred sites protection in, um, for instance, land transfer. You know, we're not in the middle of revising those directives, but we're looking at those directives to see where we can insert aspects of sacred sites protection. And uh, we are creating training for Forest Service personnel and involving tribal partners with their expertise wherever possible. So what are we doing? Just right off the bat, we're doing some things to change the, the awareness, uh, the, the abilities, the skill level, and the attitude of Forest Service personnel across the agency. We're doing this through uh, conducting webinars in each region. Each region is looking at case studies about how they've been working with sacred sites, and they're, making, they're presenting those across the agency. So every region is, is doing a separate one, so they're region-specific but agency-applicable. And then eventually we're going we're gonna to open these up uh, externally and bring in more tribal partners. And we just put out a request for a proposal to uh, get a contractor to help us develop a series, um, it's a, actually a program of facilitated learning engagements. So the idea is it's facilitated, means you have somebody to help. It's learning, so it's not just getting talked at, 
so it's not just training where you sit in a classroom and, and somebody talks to you. And it's engagement. So that means it's interactive and people participate and have a chance to practice some of this stuff. And we're engaging on on the ground mutual learning experiences. What I mean by that is we're going to we're getting tribal leaders in government and the, the spiritual leaders on the ground with forest service leaders, same place on a, on a sacred sites to look at that same piece of ground through different lenses and learn from each other about that. We're also creating um, a mentoring program where the Forest Service leaders, the Forest Supervisors, the Rangers, the, the folks in research who um, are really good at this, get them together with folks who are coming up through the ranks and need to get good at this. The other thing that we're doing is we're working closely with an interagency group um, to implement the interagency sacred sites memorandum of understanding that was also signed in, in 2012. So we're working with uh, a variety of different agencies on training. Um, defense has the lead with that. Uh, confidentiality standards, Department of Interior has the lead for that. Uh, management practices and capability building. So uh, Leslie Wheelock at Department of Agriculture has the lead on that. Public Outreach and Communications, Energy, Department of Energy is working on that one. And then a kind of a policy, overall policy review, the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation is putting that together. We've actually developed a series of documents that we've, we've brought before National Congress of American Indians and other folks over the, the past year or so and refined those documents over the past year. And we'll be uh, sending those out again um, starting this summer. So that's just a very, very quick overview of um, what the Forest Service has been up to in tribal relations in general. And again, that's really focused on what's happening at the national level, but I just want to emphasize that at the local level, at the, at the regions, at the forests, at the districts, at the research stations, at the state and private offices around the, the country, that people are, have really started to uh, dig in and learn and start to apply these the concepts that we've put into place, the, the orientation that we've been putting into place over the past several years and developing and enhancing and building these relationships in a really good way. So I'm, I'm really encouraged as we move forward. So thank you. <laughs>